All right, Jake. Hey, Issue Kurt. 18 of Commandy Lost, Last Boy on Earth. We're only doing 20 of these, and we're getting to the end of the year. So we're flying uh, by, but we're in the is. we're in the D Bruce Berry zone now. <laughs> the D Bruce Berry zone. I like that. I People like don't that. know what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> the credits have changed as of last issue, issue seventeen, uh, from Mike Royer, who was the uh, the stalwart on inks for uh, for the beginning of this um, title till now, and uh, yesterday. I mean, yesterday, last episode, uh, D. Bruce Berry, whether that's a real person or not, uh, was credited. So uh, maybe um, maybe there are multiple hands working on this. We don't know. If that's I still think it's or... Roz. Well, we know Roz. that Roz used to <laughs> Roz used to help out with deadlines. We hear yeah. I'm reading about that, but uh, yeah. So we have a. Uh, a big worm uh, crunching uh, some machinery on the cover. Command is trying to dart out of the way. And we have uh, gorillas that are uh, screaming and pointing. It lived and hungered and ate anything in its path. Anything. The eater. So um, we're still only 20 cents here. When they put the still only on there, that means you know that they're going to be changing the price pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just say twenty cents. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're we're doing a comic here from nineteen seventy four. This is uh, Commanded the Last Boy on Earth, June nineteen seventy four is when it's um, titled. But that that could be give or take a couple of months either way. And uh, as we join the action, um, we see that uh, Commandy is sitting at a desk. In a ruined office, it says the apes have taken over. Um, they keep hitting these these notes all all the time here. Man has fallen to the bottom of the ladder. This is the state of things after a great natural disaster has changed the world. In the ruins of a factory in shattered Ohio, a deadly game of cat and mouse is being played with Commandy, the last point on Earth. Um, and uh, it seems like Commandy is in a pose where he's kind of like biding his time. And the uh, gorilla arm is sneaking in, trying to open the door surreptitiously. Um, Command is sitting across from somebody who died long ago. Yeah. Look at the contrast between the uh, inking style, if you will, or just the mark making in comparison mm -hmm. to to here. Once again, I believe it's because whoever D. Bruce Barry is, they're working directly from Jack's pencils. Right. Slave to the pencils, as they say. Mm -hmm. you know, no, no, no diversion. So, so are we going to get our double page spread? And okay. yes, we are. Ooh, there we go. Great. So, Crash. Yeah. And uh, you know, this was a this was the classic setup, right? The hook. You know, there's a guy sitting at a desk, and they see this arm coming through, and that sets up this action. We're we're off and running. The hunters are swarming to trap Commandy, and uh, he's too quick and agile to be caught that easy. They're coming at multiple angles. They're getting him from the other part of the room too. What are they oh, crashing yeah, through a crash, crashing through a door or a transom or something? Um, and then they're coming through this office door. They destroy the desk. Uh, don't you apes believe in knocking? Sassy talking <laughs> animal. He must be the one who's stealing our supplies. This is where he's been hiding in this ruin. We finally tracked him down. Uh, loving these eight faces. I think yeah. Kirby has been getting better at the eight faces as time has progressed through this series. I don't think they were as cool that they were good as designed as they were as they're getting now um and so yeah it's all flooding back what happened in the last episode is that the uh the apes sent commandy down a hole fitted with a bomb and uh, a bunch of bombs and uh, he went down there and he realized there was this little species of little mole people living down there right? from ohio from ohio right the mole people of ohio I don't know if that's supposed to be a commentary from Kirby or something. <laughs> we, we don't know. Maybe he had a yeah, uh, yeah an in-law that he didn't like or something. But uh, <laughs> from Ohio. But uh, 
yeah, I mean that that this comic series is just ripe with opportunities for all these kind of things. Um, yeah, so where's this gonna go? So Commandy's running in this office, and I, you know, I count like ten guys here, ten apes that are trying to get him. Um, let's see what happens next. Commandy has no choice but to crash out through an old window, head him off, and uh, they're shooting at him. Wham! And again, as he does over and over, Commandy grabs the pistol from the uh, apes that fall and. Turn, turn the pistols on them. I'll show you how to use this pistol, you clumsy ape. Why, you? <coughs> if you can make an animal out of me, I can make a monkey out of you. Give me that gun. And so he takes the other guy's gun away. And uh, it's time I said goodbye now. All right. So we're already in Chapter 2. Ooh, I love this. Mm -hmm. This is great. This took a minute. New dangers, new battles, new means of survival are part of the savage heritage deeded to those still alive in the graveyard of the past. In Commandy's world, surprise is bound to mean death, and the strangest, most horrifying surprise is yet to come. Watch out for the eater. Um, do you notice anything different with the uh, the typefaces that he's using for these uh, titles? Yep. I'm, I'm seeing these, they're kind of getting a little more like florid. Is that a word? I was going to say ruled, like there's not, they're, they're, yeah, they're just there's, very, they're, uh, they're ruled, but they're also kind of like designed, I, you know, I think maybe he was like looking at some 60s fonts or something. Yeah, because, yeah, it was like a hippie thing. Right, because Leading back into that 74, stuff. maybe some record covers, because yeah. the psychedelic yeah. letters, I, I actually teach yeah. my, my students uh, how to do psychedelic letters, we're going to do that later this week, but um. You know, I, of course, I love Kirby's letters. One thing is that, you know, he knows that they should be, you know, readable from, like, 20 yards. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Eater in Chapter 2 can't hit a moving target, eh, dummy? Crafty little animal, you think your taunts will spoil my aim. And so he, here we are in this kind of, like, warehouse setting now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all ruined, but there's a lot of, like, uh, I guess you know, crates and uh, shelves and knocked over uh, platforms and pipes and balconies, catwalks, whatever you call it. Interesting stuff. So it really looks like he's thought about like, you know, factory production, what it looks like, what the, what's in there, right? The design of the interior, very thoughtful. Be careful, fool. I want another shot at him. No, this is way easier. We're better at this than he is. I guess they mean swinging on vines. Look out, he's swinging back. You didn't expect that, did you? When Commandy reaches the platform, punk, ugh, chattering little rat, don't let him get away. What? And there he goes, right through the wicket. <whistles> Blast him, he's disappearing down an open chute. I can't think of a faster way to travel. Come back, you. Too late, I've got to meet some friends. And no man has ever had weirder friends. Go for people, no less. He says, as a preview, <laughs> as he dives down right back into the midst of the gopher people who are the ones doing the actual stealing. Oh At the other end of the shoot, grab me, fellas. They're there ready to catch him. While Commandy has played tag with the apes, the little human gophers have been looting the factory ruins. Duck into your tunnels. The apes are on their way here. Beneath the ground is a network of passages dug by the little humans. I'm earning my keep, fellas. I'll take some food. Okay, so now we're in this little underground cavern. And we did see um, last issue, there was this giant machine down there. But Oh, there it is. It it's, uh, wasn't explained exactly what's being produced, right? Mm -hmm. In their strange tunnel world, these beings are the products of humans who survived the great disaster by going underground. Sound familiar? Yep. So, Always going underground in post-apocalyptic stories. Yeah, well, we're going to be using that uh, device in our uh, mm -hmm. Turbo Pit Fighter. Um, I think uh, uh, issue number four or five, we're going to go in, in backstory uh, to a, uh, a sequence of time where uh, some young people uh, build a network of tunnels. Um, you know, the question is, like, where's the air coming from? You know, we're going to have to figure out some kind of uh, 
you know, vehicle where the air is piped in from an area that's not as poisoned, right? Otherwise, yeah. wouldn't it be just as bad, if not worse, because you don't have the wind or you don't have the the, the currents, right? Yeah. Uh, so we will we will explain all those things in our story. Meanwhile, in Jack Kirby's story, they practically depleted the apes supplies above up above. Uh, womp womp, but the oddest thing of all is that wacky machine these people keep in operation. Womp womp, womp womp. It never stops. The Gopher people service this thing as if their lives depended on it. Womp womp, and. We see it certainly is a puzzler. The machine does nothing but vibrate in the tunnel and make a lot of noise. Suddenly, look out! Splack! Yah! Yah! Good gravy! The machine has a broken gear. It's stopped. The gopher people are in panic. One would think it's the end of the world. Yag! Yog! Gripped by this bizarre event, Commandy experiences an unexplainable feeling of fear. Well, I'd swear I felt a sort of movement within the tunnel walls. I felt it again. Something's moving. It seems to be stronger in this direction. Let me go towards it. <laughs> and I would imagine this is going to be what was on the uh, cover. You know, that's a big decision you have to make is, am I going to spoil the monster by putting it right on the cover? Or am I going to tease the monster? Um, in this case, you know, they spoil the monster, so that kind of ruins this, at least this one sequence, you know, where there's supposed to be some kind of mystery to what's going to happen. Right, right. There is now an eerie silence. Only the ground rolls like the back of, only the ground rolls like a, like the back of a giant beast. Something living beneath my feet. What can it be? I think I can hear it now, a munching sound. It's eating, eating. Now, we just have to pause at that panel, don't we? Wow. I was going to say, that is... That's a keeper. That's... Wow. I'm going... I mean, it, I'm it, taking it, a swipe yeah. of that one. I just want to have oh, that. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to use that for okay. something on my social media. That, that, that could be a meme tomorrow. Who is this D. Bruce Barry? Well, I don't know if it's Who him, it? but, uh, you know, you know, we said that... Uh, that that Kirby kind of took away his own surprise value here, but uh, you know he's putting in some some drama back in with the uh, aesthetics here. I, yeah. I would imagine this is just Kirby doing this thing. The Earth is caving in. I've got to make a run for it, or I'll be swallowed up in this fissure. Suddenly, growling, yow. When the mighty have fallen, there's room for the small to grow. The great disaster overtook man while his eyes were on the stars. His mind was far from the tiny things that lived beneath his feet. Now command he faces what his ancestors overlooked as the worm turns. Of course, being a coy reference to as the world turns, soap opera, people, yeah. people that are listening to this might not know what that is at this point <laughs> or in the future. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, of course, the most the most famous parody was as the stomach turns. I don't know what that was like, Mad Magazine or SNL or something. Um, I can't believe it. So we're in chapter three now. I can't believe it. This this thing is bigger than an elephant and twice as hungry. Pow pow pow! Command is just shooting it and uh, not doing anything. Uh, this is a great pen. What's the what's the uh, man eating uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show? Um. Rocking our picture. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, there was the, the uh, feed me, feed me, Seymour. Right. <laughs> Just seven days, I can make you a man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just saw that. I don't know. A little punchy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got all those man eater puns, right? You got Hall of Notes. Mm -hmm. I think that was a number one. Bullets can't harm it. It probably eats them like it does the earth and rock. Bleow. But the sh the sound of shooting seems to make it nervous. That's why you go for people built your machine. Its sound and vibration kept this eater away. I can't stop him. Run for your lives. Crunch. It's attacking the machine. It's swallowing it. 
the thing moves relentlessly. So wait a second, the machine's broken down? It it popped a gear, and that's why the oh, eater uh, came okay. straight to this uh, area. It was it was kept away by the sound and vibration. And so uh, now the machine's not running anymore. The eater just came right forward and just eating okay, everything. Okay, okay. It consumes metal and rock and whatever stands in its path. It can't be stopped. It'll destroy everything. These gopher people haven't got a chance. Like crazed animals, they flee in all directions. Poor creatures, the, eat, the eater can dig as well as they can. There must be a way to save them. The eater moves so fast, there's no time to think. Here it comes. I've still got this pistol, and sound disturbs it. Let's see what a few more shots will do. Interesting. I like that panel where he's, uh, the camera would be like from inside the eater. Wow, that's, yeah, the aperture like that, yeah. Right, that seemed to shake him up. The eater is driven to frenzy, but instead of backing off, he lurches madly forward. Bam, wham. I made him angry. He's coming after me, you think? Ugh, I'm falling back. <laughs> Moved by desperation, Commandy finds another hold and continues his flight. Phew, that slip almost cost me my life. This tunnel leads to the surface, and the gorillas are up there waiting for me. Wait. That's a perfect idea. Dot, dot, dot. So, yeah, this comic, I'm, I'm really feeling it moving fast. You know, we have a double-page spread. We have these full-page uh, spreads on these uh, chapter titles. Chapters, yeah. I mean, you know, he did put a lot in on that one where all the uh, factory wreckage was there and everything. But, um, you know, it seems like he's got a, a process now that really lets him just kind of, like, blast through this. You know, drawing the eater and drawing rocks and stuff, just, you know, it goes very quickly for him. So um, now we're already in Chapter 4, and uh, we're seeing some more of his inventive uh, lettering. Some of it ruled with uh, straight edges, and some of it a little more fancy free. Yes, up above the gorillas wait, but not in silence, not in weariness. They've been plagued by the gopher people until the bloodlust has seized them. The need for violent death is strong, and the issue must be decided. So it shall be, so it shall end in sudden flame. In sudden flame? Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting title. How, As the worm turns. How much? In sudden flame. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, you think about it. He's got these chapter titles. Sometimes, you know, he's got a, a pun or something interesting. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, uh, teasing something that we're going to see later on. So, you know, maybe he just left this whole upper third of the page blank while he was just, you know, blasting through all these pages. And then he came back later and he just did the lettering. How much more of this? And it's an interesting way to work if he, if he does do something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and also not too much, um, you know, value here on the coloring job. Um it's a blank page, you know, and there's no background. There's only foregrounds. So uh, somebody put in a little patch of sky blue, um, you know, but, the you know, the colorist might have done a sunset or done, you know, like a, a more involved fade. Um, you know, the inker didn't do anything. The colorist didn't do anything. So maybe like a little cut corner here. Um, meanwhile, in the foreground, how much more of this ammo and explosive fuel do we have to move, Sarge? All of it. Pile it up. Put it on the center of the gopher hole area. I get your plan, Sarge. That's Sergeant Oof, you get Oogash, it. right? Oogash, the gopher Oogash. creeps will come up to steal this stuff, and when they do, poof. We'll get the whole colony this time. It'll take them all to move this. And uh, here they're like uh, stacking up all the canisters. They may be clever little creeps, but they've played their last trick on Sergeant Oogash. You're almost killed in one encounter, Sarge. These scheming diggers will pay for it right now. I hear something stirring below. Get ready, they're coming up. Take cover. Don't let them see you. When I give the command, open fire on this ammo. It'll blow them sky high. Everyone's scurrying in different directions. No sooner do the apes vanish from sight. I've made it. I've reached the surface. Yeah, I can kind of see them <laughs> sticking in. <laughs> Sticking out. What's this? The apes have stacked their ammo here. Easy on that trigger. Wait for the gopher creeps to show. Here comes the eater. 
Grounge. Eager to surprise their enemies, the hidden apes are unprepared for what emerges. Sarge, look, by all the devils, what is it? Crunch. That thing, it's eating the ammo. Make way, you apes. Clear the area, run, anything can happen now. Yow! Here we see Commandy side by side with the apes in common cause now. In their panic to find cover, the apes overlook Commandy. To them, he's only an animal and unimportant. What now, Sarge? Find cover and dig in. That thing's still chewing up the ammo, all of it. Brace for a blow up. Hug the ground. Meanwhile, the eater is mindful only of its hunger. Blind and unintelligent, it swallows its deadly food. Then the inevitable happens. The fuel ignites. The eater rears its lengthy body as it begins to glow with flame. Grouch. The blast comes, and its shock is felt for miles. Wham. So, no complaint about that panel. That's a cool panel. It's got a lot of Kirby that Kirbyisms. Is. But what you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do a full page spread, why not on that? You know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we we we've come across that a couple of times. Kind of a lost. Uh, yeah, like you said though. I mean, he has a a. a like a process in place. So once he hits the chapters, that's going to be the, the, the one page panel blow up, right. you know, splash page. And then he doesn't, he doesn't seem to do the, here. yeah, he seems to do those, those chapter resets at kind of like transition points, right. Rather yeah, than like, yeah. you know, climactic action points. I, I would, I would say maybe, you know, do a half a page and then just go into some panels and save your, you know, save your big spot for this. I'd love to see like a giant explosion. Just me. Um, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a cop out to do a, a giant explosion on a full page, right? Because you're just drawing a bunch of mm. radial lines, right? <laughs> and a big sound effect. <laughs> you know, what do you do? I mean, I'm looking at this next panel with these apes flying in every direction. That, that could have been great. If this was, so now you see, you know, you picture a full page. The worm is blowing up from the inside. You got the big sound effect, and then the apes all around. I would have loved that, but yeah. it didn't come at the opportune time. The apes have underestimated the shock. They're flung about like toy dolls. Yow! The echoes take a long time to fade. When it's over, only the crackle of flame is heard. Sergeant Ugash, you've seen everything now. Whatever that thing was, it's gone. Troop, reform. All present and accounted for, Sarge. No bones broken. The miracle was still alive. This place has a curse on it. Break camp and prepare to pull out. We're heading back to base. You won't get any gripes from us, sir. We're all for it. So I guess that's what they meant by in sudden flames. And our final page, page 20. This is what this, the formula has been. At that moment, one of the guerrilla vehicles rumbles across the clearing. Hey, someone's swiping one of our rovers. It was, but, 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 it was that yellow-haired animal. He took it. The little thief. Goodbye, apes. I'm bugging out. They'd have made me a slave if I'd been caught. My best bet is to make as much mileage as I can and as fast as I can. Commanding then heads north on an old ruined highway. Whatever lies ahead can only be an improvement. The end. And... Next issue, don't miss the last gang in Chicago. So he's headed to Illinois. And uh, that ends that. From Ohio. Yep, from, he's, uh, he's over in the Midwest. And uh, this is where we're at right now. So, yeah, what do you think about that one? A little formulaic? Or uh, did it, it didn't really advance any kind of long-term story, right? Yeah, he's, you know, once again, he's on his own. You know, he's out, he's out uh, finding adventure or, or, or adventures finding him. At every turn. You know, I, it, you know I, it's good stuff. I mean, it's, um, you know, I, we're, we're towing along many questions about the world itself. You know, when did the great disaster really happen? What was the great disaster? You know, this differentiation of... Uh, humans being animals and animals now being more human-like 
uh, you know, right. by that. Is there a uh, a time capsule? There, there for, is. For We're going to get issue? to the time capsule. Ooh, you boy. know, sometimes there's some clues revealed in the time capsule. Oops. Correct. My video on. Um, da, da, so da, da. it's time capsule time. Yeah, and um, you know, I I would say again, you know, I don't think this really advanced the world or the series yeah. or the uh, you know or the long term. This was just kind of like uh, another installment, a formulaic installment in the, uh, you know, in the series, you know, they, uh, and this was a two-parter, you know, they just went to another city, found another species of creature, um, you know, they had, they had wars with the uh, bad guys of the time, and uh, some nice monsters, and, um, and then it was resolved, and now we're on to the next thing, so, you know, um, you know, one thing maybe that, uh, you know, comics have kind of changed or, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm sure he's done this already by this time with the FF and, uh, you know, other series is like, no, there's going to be some long term, you know, events happen that advance the progress of the, you know, of the series and the world, you know, just to keep those fans, you know, uh, you know, to have something juicier to bite on than you know, then another episode, you know, similar to so What's many the other... thread to pull on, you know, you keep pulling this thread and it's going to end up leading you somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, maybe the, we're just critiquing that these, these issues don't really lead anywhere. Like it's other than to Chicago. Now you went to Ohio from DC to now Chicago. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong um, with, with having adventures as you're passing through, but you know, maybe if he, if, you know, if he had some, some greater destination in mind or, you know, or even just found clues within these, uh, um, dilapidated places, you know, so there's there, you know, there could have been a, a tape recording machine that falls off right. a shelf and plays its last like bits. And you're like, what? Yeah. Or, you know, or, else, or else you drop a clue that is, is going to be used in a later issue. Right. A MacGuffin. Um, you know, you yeah. could you could say, yeah. you know, I wonder if I'll ever see Ben Boxer again. You know, like you know, at the at the point where he's dying. Yeah. Yep. Um. So you know, you didn't see that. I I gotta say, this one was probably a little mailed in for me. Um. You know, it gave you uh, as the last one. It yeah, gave you all I mean, the good you know, visuals. It, it gave you everything you're expecting as far as action and and the, and the commandy formula. But um. You know, yeah. we've seen issues where he was a little more thoughtful about. You know, tying things in, you know, pre-planning other things, you know, using other um, references, you know, and uh, we'll have to uh, let's have to we'll, we'll dig into the time capsule, see if there's maybe anything in the time capsule, because he did write a very weird letter in the last issue that was kind of like a one off, um, yeah. you know, answering some questions about animals. But uh, let's see, dear Mr. Kirby, when I went to grade school, I remember the name Kirby on Fantastic Four and Thor. Now I'm in college and I see the name of Kirby graces the pages of Commandy. I just want to say thanks. I find your story most entertaining in the field of comics. You always put something special in each issue. Can't really pin down what that something special is, but it traps me every time I read Commandy. Um, so yeah, this one, just a... Uh, a uh, letter of praise it goes on like that it's great to escape into his world so as to get away from all the factual hardcore reading in my textbooks dan carmen from kearney nebraska it says uh and the name kirby will probably still crop up is a thanks for the kind words the name kirby will probably still crop up when your kids enter grade school <laughs> that's true <laughs> dear jack and steve since you asked, I thought I would let you know that I'm out here. I've read Commandy since its inception, watched the mag grow to greatness. My first thought after reading the first issue was that it was a loose combination of the planet of the apes and the high evolutionary. But as the months passed, all that changed, and Commandy is now one of my top 15 comics out of 70. <laughs> and it's one of the comics, it's well, how... very specific. Uh, I I want to thank you for one of the finest books. Not only does the monthly schedule make for a better continuity, but my sister, who likes Commandy and is hard to please, and I don't have to wait as long between issues. Oh, oh, so her sister enjoys it too. Keep on the same track. 
Steve Andrews, St. Charles, Missouri. We're gratified that you're willing to spend money in advance for Commandy's adventures. And Jack is doing his best to see that each one is more fulfilling than the previous. Here we go. Dear sir, I teach seventh grade science where I try to use science fiction to arouse my students' interest and awaken their minds. I have been very interested to see if Commandy would provide me with good scientific science fiction for these students who are not hooked on books, in quotes. I find many good points, but you need a science consultant to keep you from falling into such errors as a four-legged clawed insect. My students will be making insect collections next month, and all will be looking for six-legged creatures. Please be more careful. Paula Mayhew, Green Belt, <laughs> Maryland. And they respond, it's interesting to hear that our magazines are finding their way into the classroom with the teacher's approval, Miss Mayhew, and we extend our appreciation. We should point out that the stories and characters in Commandy remain closer to fantasy than to science fiction. Click Clack, while resembling a grasshopper, can be considered a mutated species combining certain insect and certain mammalian traits. But we'll watch it next time. <coughs> okay. She thought she had him there. Um, dear Jack, what's happening? I thought Commandy was the only one able to talk, but now I read about Bull Bantam who can ride and talk and use a rope. I know you could teach him to ride and use a rope, but it took thousands of years for man to talk. So when the catastrophe came, man had to start over. I know you could teach him a few words, but a whole language. I also think you are cutting the animals out. I have a good idea for your mag. Have an army of intelligent alligators attack Sacker's company and have a big battle and end up having Commandy save the alligator leader from Bolt Bantam. This would make Commandy and the alligators friends like the lions. But Commandy is your story, not mine. And the response is, not true, Mike. Commandy is your story. Oh, that was Mike Gregg from Hamburg, Iowa. The adventures belong to all our readers and we're always glad to hear your ideas on how you think things should go. We've gotten a lot of mail on the fact that Bull Bantam and Spirit are able to communicate. The answer is one that will be explained as the story unfolds. Yeah, now. So stay with us. Uh, last uh, letter, it says, I've been reading comics for 12 years. Never have I read a more exciting comic than Commandy. How can you make each such a high quality one? I'll never know. Fantastic tone. One thing puzzles me, however, in all your issues, you have shown the animals using pre-disaster items. My question is, do the animals realize that the humans once had a mighty civilization, or do they believe that the machines are remnants of an animal civilization? Robert Bostick, Austin, Texas. Apparently not, Robert. In regards to do the animals realize that man once ruled, as shown in issue 8, the lions of Washington Zoo have in their possession artifacts which they are unsure of. They can sense that man was once highly valued, but it's doubtful that they realize man was responsible for their machines. This is part of the message that Commandy is trying to get across. So you see there, every letter is an opportunity for them to defend themselves and explain something away. <laughs> uh... It says, uh, every letter is read and evaluated by Jack to help shape the content. And uh, see you next month. So, there we go, folks. Not a lot. Not a lot there. Yeah. So, you know, I would just want to say, I'm not down on Jack Kirby. I think it is an amazing feat to be able to crank out a monthly comic. And as a comic creator, I'm just trying to, like, you know, pick apart and analyze how he was able to do this. You know, we've spoken about his chapter, you know, splash pages every couple of pages, every five pages or so. And instead of having to break down nine panels, he's just making a big splash and he's using up a third of the page with title graphics. Yeah. Um, so those are little cheats, but, you know, there's but they're also, you know, you know, really pretty to look at. They're worth you know, some money. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, the original art is, is going to be a lot more valuable. But I don't than think he was page. thinking that way. Yeah, he wasn't thinking that way. Yeah, he wasn't, no. I mean, maybe after a while he was. Um, you know, we, so we broke down a lot of great stuff here. Like, you know, there's a great, there was just a panel that just had an amazing 
you know, original Kirby design of Commandy's face with all these great shadows on it. I mean, to me, that made my day. But, um, you know, we had some real intricate detail on the uh, warehouse. We had some, um, you know, interesting interaction with these uh, gopher people. Um, the idea of the worm. I don't know if this was uh, pulled straight out of Dune. I guess this might have been pulled straight out of Dune in this case, right? Not really. I mean, it's, I mean, it, 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 you know, it's a tunneling worm, but the dune takes place on a sand planet, you know, a desert planet. So, and, and they're revered as like gods. Right. Okay. Well, this was, but, but, but this is, this is, the yeah. interesting part is they call, well, sound is the attractor too. So they, they um, put these uh, thumpers out. In order to call the, uh, uh, there's things that just like boom, 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 and right. then the, it would call them. And then of course, as they're emerging, the uh, the Fremen, you know, um, you know, uh, ride them. They end up climbing the side of them and getting on top and riding them. Uh, but yeah, I saw I saw the Dune movie. Um, is there it doesn't there... mean that it doesn't mean though. And, and I just want to bring in like. He's doing like two other comic books. So, you know, hands down, um, you know, there's a new episode, a new, new issue we think is the Sandman that he's working on now. So he's, he's got, he's got a, you know, he's got a lot of, 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 of load there, but this is my question in suspecting that he's reading or has have read science fiction uh, novels and pulp. And, um, you know, would would have been um, um, privy to the Dune novels um, and just in a maybe even subconscious way, just plucked out this uh, creature to be the the, uh, you know, the antagonist or what have you in there. Right. Well, it's it's a it's a definite possibility. The stuff was out by then. Um, I'm pulling out an issue of Sandman here. I have issue number five. 25 cents mind you <laughs> and it says oh, no. uh I, so it's bi-monthly 1975 so yeah he would have just been starting because uh, this was june 74 mm -hmm. and so yeah this is right around the time he was uh probably kicking out sandman by now yep. as a bi-monthly but if he was doing three titles a month what else was he doing i think it was uh he had Demon out. He had Commandy. Um, When's Mr. Sure Miracle? Mr. Miracle coming out too at the same time? Yeah, you know, I don't have too many Mr. Miracles. I don't know if I have any Mr. Miracles. I have a lot. I, have, I, have a lot. I love Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle was, was of <laughs> course, interesting to me because of Big Barda. Uh, me too, but I, I think there's just, you keep reading them and you find more and more neat, like, worldy building stuff. You know things and intricacies and stuff. Yeah, and Mister Miracle was another thing that I would say DC probably continued further than maybe anything else because well, Commandy maybe, goes maybe, pretty far. Well, Commandy continues, but it was only as as his solo title. Mister Miracle kind of like melded in with all the other DC universe uh, new worlds, gods, and, the new gods. Right, but they but they had a lot of other people working on it, and and you know I think they're still doing it today. I was in the comic store, yeah, Newberry yeah. Comics the other day, and I saw yeah. Mister Miracle is still coming out. Yep, I don't see any new Commandies coming out. Uh, you know, and and Demon Demon is still coming out too. So they they are they are um, you know, continually putting the uh, the Kirby titles out. DC is you know they're they're adding them to their pantheon. Um, and, uh, you know, let's, let's consider if Marvel is doing that with Kirby's comeback title, you would have had, uh, the Eternals. Are they making new Eternals comics now? Oh, no. No. And, um, what else? Uh, Devil Dinosaur? No. Are they doing any? No, no, no. They just let Maybe. that all go. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't follow mainstream. Right, I don't. Right. I don't even look to find, and if I do acquire any information, <laughs> it doesn't stick because there's no interest. Like, ooh, I'm gonna have to maybe pick that up. Nope. Well, I am going to be flying by the store uh, because I'm going to Five Below to get to uh, to buy a whole bunch of art supplies for my students. 
Um, so I uh, I might pass by the Newberry Comics and see what's on the racks. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also want to plug uh, Steve Mannion. Uh, Steve Mannion is an indie comics guy that was uh, working for uh, Fantagraphics uh, slash Eros um, back during the days uh, that we were also making some stuff. <laughs> and um, he's he's out with some with some new comics today. He's been doing pretty well. He's on Kickstarter. Um, he's putting out these comics called Fearless Dawn, and um, I might go pick up a issue. I actually bought a digital download of one of his sketchbooks from like ten years ago, um, but it was only two dollars. So who cares? Maybe three dollars. Um, but uh, he's he's a good example of somebody that's staying in the game. And uh, I'm gonna go, uh, you know, maybe maybe in our um, in our other stream we'll uh, we'll do a report on him and see if we can reach out and uh, find out if he'll do eventually reach out and see if he'll do a a turbo pinup or something. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. All let's right. wrap it up. Let's wrap yep. it up for today. Next issue is gonna be commanding number nineteen. So. The drums are beating for what's going to happen once we run up this 20 spot. Um, you know, I definitely I definitely would would say that it's a possibility that we come back to Commandy, wouldn't you? I do. I do. I do yeah. agree with you. But we are going to have to – we're going to do this first 20, and then we're going to do some other things mm -hmm. meantime, um, and we'll see how long that goes. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you're looking at this years later, you know, look online <laughs> – you might see that we just <laughs> picked right back up with Commandy 21 because Kirby goes until I think around, you know, the thirties or forties, right? Yes. Right. Right. So, um, that's going to wrap up this edition. Uh, Kurt, um, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time and see, yeah. uh, what command is going to encounter. I see there's a big blank yellow space. So what's all that about? Is that to, to be like uh, dram dramatic or something? What are you talking about? The cover? Yeah. The next issue, there's a big blank yellow space. Oh, you don't have you yours out? You don't have your cover out for the next issue? Uh, well, let me tickle the box and see. <laughs> yeah. Because it's probably bagged and boarded. So, yeah. Except mine is like totally pastel yellow it's like almost white mm, and faded. those look like humans to me ah uh, yes it's gonna be very very interesting to see how well they talk like hey buddy you right <laughs> right and then they're gonna, gonna turn be... out to be like robots or something in a no, great simulation yeah, it's gonna i very... don't know i can't remember that i cannot remember this issue so i do not know and i'm not gonna spoil it until we uh we hang out next uh sunday no, well, we just teased it, so uh, yep. Uh, yep. stay tuned next time for the last gang in Chicago. Say, right. say, yeah, yeah, and I'll see you there, Jake. Yeah, and you have a good week now. <laughs> All right, man. All right, later. Later. later.